Hello, I'm Atsubo Judge. Now today is Friday. Praise God. Hey, listen, God is doing a wonder in your life. He's doing a wonder in our country, in our nation. Fear not. He is in charge. Hallelujah. And guess what? Soon you are going to see the hand of God move over Nigeria nation and all over the earth. The Lord is moving. He's moving. He's moving. He's moving. Guess what? At the end of it all, every nation shall bow. That's what he said. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord and it shall be to the glory of God the Father. Praise God. Can you call? Can we call for that daily bread right now? Are you ready? Say this with me and say it with your heart and mean it. Father, I've got daily bread to receive today. And so I receive it right now, all of it, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Oh, glory. You know, when all these things I've been sharing with you, and it's important that you realize one thing. We are not just living a life hoping that God will accept us. No. No. If you are a true child of God, you will know that you're already walking in the blessing of the Lord. So what you just need to do is to learn and operate it fully. Learn and operate it fully. You know, um, let me show you something that came to my spirit yesterday. Acts chapter 19. There's something wonderful I saw here. Acts chapter 19. From verse 11. Now he says, Now God walked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the disease left them, and the evil spirit went out of them. Now watch this. I want you to understand something. It says, Paul, who was an apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel, he got to that point where the Bible says, God began to work unusual miracles by his hand. Now, so much so, meaning it got this good, <laughs> praise God, that they took handkerchiefs and aprons for, from him to people who couldn't come for the meeting. And when they placed those handkerchiefs and apron on them, if they were sick, they became healed. Now, if they were demon-possessed, the demons checked out. What a wonderful thing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But watch this now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then, verse 13. Follow this now. Then, some of the itinerant Jews, that's traveling Jews. You know, um, now, follow this now. Itinerant Jews, itinerant Jewish exorcists. He classified who these people were. Now, who were who are exorcists? Now, these are people who actually cast out devils, but not by the name of Jesus. They they cast, they use spirits to cast out devils. You understand what I'm saying? So, like they 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 conjure higher spirits, but the lesser one will leave, and this higher one takes over. So that person is free for a moment, then you know. So even till this day, there are people like that. They, are, they call them spiritualists. So you take the, they, they, they say all kinds of things, they conjure all kinds of things, but not the name of Jesus. Now, these itinerant Jewish exorcists, they, they are traveling people. They, they don't stay in one place. So now they came to town in Ephesus and they saw that people will carry handkerchief 
and placed on a demon-possessed person. Now, their profession was to be casting out devils, disintegrated Jewish exorcists. That's their profession. So they came to town and they saw that people would drop handkerchief on people and the demons would leave. Ah! They will spend weeks, days to chase out one devil. And suddenly somebody brings a handkerchief and drops on a demon-possessed person. I say, in the name of Jesus. And immediately the devil comes out. Oh, oh, oh wow. Wow. Now watch this now. <laughs> Praise God. Watch this. It says, then, then some of the internal Jewish exorcists took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirit, saying, watch this now, we exorcise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. So they didn't get saved. They didn't, they didn't turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. They just think they have found a new trick. They have found a new way. Oh, come on now. Normally they spend a lot of time trying to cast out this devil. They conjured this, they conjured that. And, it, you know, sometimes they are... It, you see, if they don't get some measure of success, they will not continue in their trade. Praise God. So, so sometimes they, they get some relief. Okay. Now, they come to town and they see this going on like, whoo, okay, good. You know, we've seen something new. Give me that handkerchief. <laughs> you know, or, or is it the handkerchief now? Or is the name that you call? Oh, maybe it's the name that you call. So they go, in the name of Jesus. Now they didn't understand Jesus. So they say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. Come out. And guess what? In many of such cases, the demons came out. I'm telling you the truth. Yes, the demons will come out. Because see, let me tell you something about demon spirits. Demon spirits are not that wise like people think. They are not that intelligent like people think. No, they are not. So now it got so bad in town that people were dropping handkerchief on demonic spirit. And demons were just leaving anyhow. So these exorcists took opportunity, took advantage of that situation and began to cast out devils. Now watch this now. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva as a Jewish chief priest. He was an exorcist also. Who did so? Yeah. And the evil spirit answered and said, Now I see, the other people that were doing it must have been getting some results. So these seven sons of Sceva, hearing of this whole thing, like, ah, so-so people now, ah, they are casting out devils, oh, and it's easy now. Woo, okay, let's go do it too. So they went. And now, understand something. There was just demon casting going on in town so rampantly. I mean, everywhere you go, you just like, out, come out, come out. People are just... Having fun, praise God. And then this demon spoke back. And the evil spirit, verse 15, and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. Who are you? Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. Now, it's normal for demonic spirits when something has been, when, when, when we as believers, we are experiencing a great measure of success in a certain area. Now, that's going to work in a while, but a day will come because the more it happens, the more everybody, you know, there's a bandwagon effect, you know, so people join and begin to do that same thing, begin to do that same thing. And there's going to be a great measure of, of, of success whether they believe it or not. See that now? But then a day comes where the demons will begin to check everyone out. Say, come. Uh, we've been fooled. Let's begin to check out this. Let's begin to question these people that are telling us to come out. And that's what they did to the seven sons of Skip. Now, when they were challenged, that was what proved that they didn't know the Jesus they were calling. Oh, the demon dealt with them. Why? Not because the name of Jesus was not powerful, even in their mouths. It was because they 
couldn't defend their stand on the name of Jesus. Some of you didn't get that. Those demons attacked them not because the name of Jesus was not powerful in their mouths. But they themselves couldn't defend their use of that name. So you see, when God releases his blessing, we all begin to walk in it. We all begin to enjoy it. But you know what Satan is doing? He will begin to do? He will begin to see how he can corrupt the blessing. He, and how does he corrupt the blessing? Start giving people who walk by faith a bad name. Why? So that others will see, and like, ah, Baptist, ah, no, no, please don't talk about those people. Don't talk about those things. See, so now that's what happened to us believers where tithing is concerned, where giving is concerned. See, now the word of prosperity came into the church to liberate God's people. And truly, truly speaking, God's people began to prosper. Especially from the, when we entered into the 2000, the year 2000, God's people began to prosper like never before. Why? Why? Because their minds began to accept the message of prosperity, which is truth. But you know what? There is also the bandwagon effect. So when we talk about giving, oh, give, and people began to give. People began to give. People began to give. And the more they gave, the more they got blessed. The more they gave, the more they got blessed. Then there was now the bandwagon effect. So everybody now here start preaching, give, 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 give. But then you know how it works. And Satan begins to question the authority. Satan begins to question the people. And then, you know, issues began to come in. But listen, it doesn't change the fact that the message is true. It doesn't change the fact that Titan is one of the surest way. I'm, I'm, I told you something yesterday. You can't be blessed by God without Titan. It is 100% impossible. There's a bigger word. <laughs> it is impossible to be blessed by God and not tight. Very impossible. Because tithing is one of the things. And let me tell you this, see, because when we talk about tithing, people just think about, oh, church, you want to collect your money. No, tithing has nothing. Lord Jesus, we don't have time for that today. Tithing has nothing to do with the church. Tithing has everything to do with you. You. You, the tither. It is you who God commands to bring the tithes. You. So your responding to God where tithing is concerned is showing that you believe Him. You believe that He's the one that blesses you. See, that recognition, that recognition, it will make you tight. And then two, Titan keeps your relationship with him intact. How? Because, because see, now many people don't still know this till this day, but this is the truth. The tithe belongs to God. It is God's money. It is not your money. It is not church money. It is God's money. And because it is God's money, it is important that you who is bringing your tithe should ask him what he wants you to do with his money or where he wants you to deploy his money. It is important for that relationship that you say, Lord, I've been blessed today, so I bring my tithe as a mark of honor to you. Now here is it, Lord, can you direct me where to send it to? <laughs> Should we? Yes. It is when you do that, I'll tell you how it works. Then he speaks to your heart. He tells you, send it to so, so, and so. Send it to that ministry. Send it to that church. Send it to that pastor. Send it to that brother. Send it to that sister. Send it to... He, he tells you wherever he tells you to. Now, when you respond 
Guess what has happened to you? You have responded in faith. You have deployed the money exactly where God wants that money to be deployed. And guess what? Where you have deployed the money, prosperity has come to that place. So you have become God's hand in reaching out to exactly where God wants his money to get to. And guess what happens? Praise begins to go up from the earth unto God. His name is praise. He's speaking some more because he's blessing some more and God's children are getting prospered. God's children are getting goodies. Praise God. And that's how it works. And so the earth begins to wonder who are these people? Because they don't know where we get our resources from. They don't know where we get wealth from. You see that brother, he couldn't pay the school fees yesterday. And you say, hmm, and he, he's been fired from his job. I wonder where he's going to get money from to pay this fees. So what, what do we do? Should we stop his children from coming to school? Because cause I don't know. I, if, I don't know where he's going to get the money from. But he tells you, look, listen, I'll get the money. And suddenly he's at home and he's praying, oh, Father, and, and some, here's someone else who's just like, Lord, I just received this money and I'm bringing my tithes to you, Lord. And then the Lord says, give it to brother so, so, and so. Oh, okay. Lord, my tithes say, yes, give it to so, so, and so. Wow. Uh, thank you, Lord. I will be. And then he calls the brother. Hey, can you send me your account number? Okay. What's going on? Um, no, I'll, I'll talk to you later. And then he transferred the money to him. Whoa! And that's the school fees the brother is looking for. Hey, what's going on? I just saw this alert. Yeah, I was praying. And God said, I should send that money to you. It's actually his money. So he said, I should give it to you. Whoa, do you know? I was believing God for school fees. And this money you send is exact money for school fees. Brothers and sisters, I'm not just telling you folk tales. I'm telling you what I have seen, experienced, and I'm doing. Praise God. And it's going around God's children, going around the whole earth, bringing the blessing of God to everybody. And the earth will see that there are people on the earth that God is blessing, has blessed, and will continue to bless and they are manifesting the blessing. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for you today. You will become an instrument in the hand of God. He will use you to expand his kingdom. He will use you to extend his kingdom to the ends of the earth. Receive right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have the best weekend ever full of the blessing of the Lord. God bless you. Bye.